So today we're gonna to try to do a flower using alcohol inks. Our substrate today is a piece of Costco photographic paper. What is it called? Kirkland photographic paper. Okay, notice there's two different sides. There's the shiny side and there's the matte side. We wanna use the matte side. I use the word substrate. Substrate basically just means what you're doing your project on. So for example, you can do these on tiles, you can do it on glass, you could do it on um, other things, ceramics. We're just doing it on paper. It's hard enough for me to do it on paper. Okay, so today we're gonna try to make a flower using our, um, our alcohol inks and we're gonna add something called a mixative in to it. Today we're going to use honeycomb, fiesta, wild plum, and pitch black. Then we're also going to use the mixative called snow cap. Um, a mixative is often mixed with other colors, obviously the word mixative, but it is used in my case, I use it for the center of my cone flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna shut the camera off for just a second to get all set up and then we'll have a go at this. Okay, so I'm going to start with a little bit of pitch black. My pitch black comes out like gangbusters and I do not want that much on my paper. So what I did was, is I just got some pitch black and I'm going to paint it on my paper. It basically allows me the opportunity to uh, control how much ink goes on the paper. Um, for some reason, I just got a real faulty bottle of ink that likes to pour out like a banshee. Anyway, so there we got some black on there and I'm going to dry it. Remember, use a cheap old blow dryer <laughs> to uh, dry your ink up. Ironically, a lot of people like to use the heat guns for embossing. I think that's what it is, embossing. Um, and there are some other specialty guns that you can purchase. This was purchased for free out of my closet and it's probably from when I went to college in 1981. So the cheaper, the smaller, the better. You don't want the heat to be too high because if you have the heat on high, what will end up happening is you will burn and warp the paper, okay? So make sure that's nice and dry. <laughs> and then I'm gonna add a little bit of wild plum to it, okay? I'm hoping the wild plum doesn't pour out quite as crazy. Well, it's definitely uh, coming out pretty quickly, but that's okay, we'll use it. Kinda dry it up. The reason I'm combining both the colors together is that when we try to create the wispy effects of the petals, the purple or the plum will carry with it a little bit of the black and it'll give it a little dimensionality to the petals. Okay. So I'm gonna roll my line here of where I want my ink to go. Well, suffice it to say it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Welcome to Alcohol Inks 101. But that's okay, we'll play with it. Remember, you can change things as much as you want with alcohol inks. There we go. Now that's a nice petal. Hmm, I wonder what I did to make that happen. What I like about it is, is if you use short, quick strokes, it will eventually give you a nice, wispy effect for your petal and it should dry eventually. <laughs> there we go. You really want to have this dry before you move on to the next petal because you don't want it to change its position, its coloring. Um, I don't really like how that came all the way out to the edge. So I've got my handy dandy Q-tip, I'm gonna slow it down a bit, round it out. This is uh, Lynn's Basic Cheat Sheet 101, but it'll look prettier that way, I think, you know, 
just my personal opinion. Okay, I am going to move the, uh-oh, move it around just a tad so I can manipulate it. Some people like to use a um, Lazy Susie. It doesn't work for me. I tried, but it's just not my cup of tea. So I'm just gonna go this way. So let me do this. I'm gonna try to have it go that way, but like I said, you never know where it's gonna take you. Hmm, I'm liking this one. Yeah, this is good. Obviously, we're gonna have to add a little bit here and there, but it'll work. It's working for the moment. So that, ah, you see how the beautiful black is becoming part of the petal? I pulled that black in there. I love that. This gives it a little bit of color. The reality is that the world is not perfectly flat. Neither are flowers. So um, they have different tones in them and they have different colors. In them. Oh, nice. See, so we're having a little bit of success today. You never know what's going to happen with these things. But I'm just trying to create that sort of cone-like feeling here. It may not end up being an exact replica of a cone flower, but you get the idea. You just want to keep working your paints out, getting your different layers. Trying to bring in a little bit of the black and the plum. I'm going to actually add, I'm going to take a tiny dot of ink to reactivate my ink that's in my palette. And I'm going to add just a little bit more black here. Um, and the reason I'm adding a little bit more black here is because I do truly want to get some more black into my picture. Okay? Whoops dry that up a little bit. So if you look while I'm drying right around here, you can see that there are the impression of petals. And then they just get lighter and more diaphanous as they go. Okay. Let that reaction begin. And then flow. Nice and smooth strokes so you don't overpower it. What I like is, is it's creating these lines little by little. So giving you the impression of many, uh, many petals in your flower. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I will add some oil. 
or some uh, alcohol and blow it out. All right, so maybe we got a little pink there. I'm gonna mop up this area over here because I don't want it to go all the way to the end. I love the use of Q-tips, don't you? It's so beautiful. Okay, and then we keep going, little by little. Got to be kind of patient with this. When you're blowing it, it looks kind of bright and crazy, crazy, but it will eventually tone down when it dries. All right, so I'm gonna shut the camera off for just a couple of minutes and do this because you don't want to watch me do this over and over and over again. And I like to make it look very um, layered, so. I'll do a few minutes of this and you can go get a snack while I do that. How does that sound? Okay, so I'm back. How was your snack? I played with this just a little bit, manipulated it just a little bit, and um, I think I'm happy. I think that I see a nice bunch of layers of petals. I see the forms of a nice flower. Um, so now we just have to concentrate making sure this is nice and dry. And then we wanna concentrate on doing the center of our flower. Now, I was remiss to be completely honest with you. I probably should have put something behind it. And maybe we'll add something in the end and maybe we'll screw it up completely in the end. But I'm gonna to try to do it this way. So again, what I'm gonna do is, uh, because my black is so insanely uh, fast when it comes out, I'm just putting a dot in my palette and I'm adding a little little alcohol in it to make it movable and then I'm drawing myself basically the top of my cornflower because if you think about it they do stick up I've got cornflowers in my garden I've got lots of cone flowers in my garden. In fact, I was so excited this year that I got different colors of cone flowers for my garden. Well, evidently the finch and beetle population are excited too because most of the petals on my cone flowers look just like this now, a little choppy. All right, so we're going to try to create what would be the center of the cone flower. Um, it gives this, this painting effect gives it a three-dimensionality, I think, um, or like, well, just the way I'm doing it gives it sort of a three-dimensionality. I might pull this out a little bit more, bring a little of the purple in, but basically, we're drawing in our center of our flower. It doesn't look too bad, but now we have to add some detail work to it. I'm going to dry the center off so we can work with it dried. <laughs> Wrong way. Okay, so now's when it gets weird. I take a little drop of alcohol and put it in my palette. And I take a simple toothpick. And I rub the toothpick in the alcohol. And then I come over to the black. And little by little, I scratch some of the black into the, what I guess essentially would be the air. You're making long, a little bit more. It looks like little tendrils or tentacles. Okay. I have to do a lot of them, but it looks good. Okay, and basically drag it into the black ink that you have. Now, so we have a few little 
just looks like tentacles there. Now we're gonna work with something. I'm not really sure what they're called. Um, some people call them micro brushes. Some people call them dental brushes. Some people call them makeup brushes. Okay, whatever it takes to make it work. This is where our fixative, or excuse me, our mixative is gonna come into play. We would like to add some color to that. Now, if we were to take the honeycomb and try to dot it right onto there, we'd probably not get a strong color. We want the honeycomb to have a little opacity. I think that's how you say it, opacity. So what we do is we take this snow cap and we're gonna mix it in with our honey color, honeycomb. And that gives it a little, whoops, I got it on the cap. That's going to give it a little bit of tooth. So it's gonna hold on to our picture as we use it. So you wanna mix it up nice, give it a little color. I might add another drop of the honeycomb in there just to make sure it's a little bit darker and mix it all up. And I actually use the micro brush to mix it up. Okay. And now we're going to start to dot all around the cone of our cone flower. Okay. So we're going to make tiny dots all over our cone flower. Now, when you start to put them on, you can actually see them, but as they dry, they lose their color a little bit. The snow cap is the only thing actually keeping it to have some color. So you have to do a whole boatload of these. And they don't have to be just on the black. You could have them floating off the black a little bit. And you just do a bunch. And remember, your ink is going to dry. So you're gonna have, you might have to go in now and again and try not to overlap them until they are dried. Because you don't want it to become one big old blur. You want it to um, have some dimensionality to it. Okay, so I got a whole boatload of those on there. That's our first wave. I don't know if you can see it. Let me bring it a little bit closer to the camera. See all the little dots? Okay, I'm gonna let those dry. Give them a quick little once over. And then, I'm gonna take another micro tool because I don't wanna mix up the colors too, too much. And I want to pour a little of the snow cap in my palette. And now I'm gonna go in and add another dimension to the dots. Okay. So now you're gonna have yellow dots and you're gonna have white dots. I'm gonna go a little bit heavier. Let's see. Our light is coming in directly across the top. So I'm probably gonna go a little bit heavier with the white dots across the top because you wanna have some, make it look like the light is coming in and hitting it, the sunlight, which incidentally, the sunlight just came out in my room <laughs> or outside my window. It's been the first really dull day in a long time that I've been able to come in and work in the craft room. So continue. Boom, 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 boom. What's happening is, is it's creating a depth. Now, it may look a little white now, but we're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna go over it a couple of times. Little dots, little dots, little dots, a couple more little dots. Okay, so now we got layer two. Blow it, dry it out a little bit. what we're gonna do we're going to go back to the snow cap oh, excuse me the uh, honeycomb and 
let's start another layer with the honeycomb. Whoops, this one's a little wet. You don't want it to get too wet because it's gonna create that mottled effect. You just want it to be damp. Oh, you see I made a boo-boo there, but you know what? No one really cares. <laughs> it's just, you just want a little bit on there. Continue to create the effect. I do say so myself. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty easy, right? And you can go on like this forever, but basically you do get the idea, right? It's going to create a sort of three-dimensionality in the image. I don't know if it's really easy to see on the camera. I hope it is. Okay, so while we're letting that cool off, we I decided that I think we need a stem. Obviously, we know the angle of what's going on. So I took a little bit of botanical. Not a huge fan, to be honest with you, because it's a little too light. I really wish it were a tad darker, but hey, a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. And I'm gonna take my paintbrush and just very, very lightly create that stem. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be thick. It doesn't have to be anything. It's just giving us the, uh, the impression of a stem. And because it's an ink, it's not taking on the exact shades everywhere. Gives you a little tonality there. Okay, so what do we think? Are we happy with our flower? You can play with it as much as you want. We can go over it with another layer of, uh, another layer of, oops, uh, I need some, I need some black. Another layer of dots. just to create that three-dimensionality effect, you can do whatever makes you happy. It's your work. It's your, it's your idea. It's your creation. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Oh, look what I did over there. A little too much. So now I'm gonna have to play with it again because I put a little too much liquid. That's all right, it's not a big deal. The joys of being an artist. I'm gonna dry that off. Dry, 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 so I can fix it up a little bit.
dry it out. Actually, by removing it, you just get that little bit of halo effect. You see? Mistakes do good things sometimes. Dry that up nice and dry. And then I'm gonna take my snow cap. It's my little white one. Do I have a white? I don't have a clean white one now. I got all dirty. Oh well, such is life. There we go, see? All better, all better, all better. All better, all better, all better. There we go, ladies, gentlemen, peanut gallery. Should we put a background in? Let's end it at this. And then we'll try backgrounds next time, okay? Now remember, you need to seal your project, and especially if you decide you want to frame it or use it for anything, because if you do not seal the project, you're going to end up having um, it fade away on you, fade away on you, and you don't want that to happen with all the work you put into it. So you're going to use a coat of Camar varnish, um, a UV protectant, and a Camar sealer, glaze I think it's called, I will put them at the end here so you can see exactly what you're going to use. And you can spray it. You wanna do three light coats of each and leave at least a 15 minute dry time in between them. So you'll spray it once, let it dry, spray it again, let it dry, spray it again, let it dry. And basically what that's gonna do is preserve your image for you. So here we have it, ladies, gentlemen, like I said. A beautiful cone flower with a three-dimensionality to it, some multi, multiple layer of petals, a nice little stem, and a project that you can do in 20 minutes. Have a great day. Enjoy your crafting.